Thor, Love and Thunder writer, claims superhero storytellers are more exciting than the actual superheroes. Hey everybody, this is Anonymous, and uh, we're going to look at this little Bounding into Comics article. Apparently, they're at it again. It's the same thing they always do, is to come out before a movie starts uh, well you know Thor is not coming out until May of 2022 but there's probably going to be more of this but this is what they do right they come out say a bunch of woke stupid crap to try to torpedo their own movie but you know I don't think they're they think they're trying to torpedo their movie they're trying to um hype their movie with their woke bullcrap. It's the complete opposite of what they're actually doing. But, you know, they they they, you know, they live in their own bubble. Everybody's stunning and brave. Love and Thunder writer Jennifer Caton Robinson declared that the people behind the camera are more exciting to her than the actual superheroes. That is why you fail. If workaday people float your boat more than a superhero for which you are paid to write a story about, then you're in the wrong career. Why did they hire you? You obviously lack the enthusiasm, the drive, the ethics, the talent to put forth an actual effort into making the best comic book movie you can. Right? When asked about the future of the genre, Robinson said, We are at a point where women and people of color are front and center. Because you put them there. People like you put them there. I love how they push a social agenda for decades that nobody wanted or cares about and then say, Oh, this is where the world is now. And we need to adapt and cater to the world's wants. Paraphrasing, obviously. But that's their ideology. That's their mode of operation. This is what you want. Or what you were told to want. She continued, and yes, the people on screen look different. But what do people behind the camera look like? That's what is most exciting to me about the future of superhero movies. I don't think it is the superheroes. I think it's the storytellers. Let me translate that for you. We are going to have every flavor of human making these movies, regardless of whether they are qualified for the job or not, except for Whitey H. McCracker. He's been too comfortable for too long. I guess despite making 20 movies that has made almost 30 billion dollars and loved by most people they just wasn't doing it right but we'll see Robinson also addressed including real world anxieties in her story saying you never want to bring in an element that's going to take people out of the movie which you do all the freaking time okay They don't call it cringe for nothing. When your mind is melted into a massive hero versus villain battle, chaos abounds, trying to keep the gauntlet away from Thanos. Then all of a sudden, for no other reason than MCU, all the girls just happen to get together in in the midst of the chaos and shoot their girl power all over the screen. That kind of takes you right out of the movie. It would have been far less distracting if someone had just spilled her soda all over my back. She added, I don't think running at po- running at topical or political stuff for the sake of it is very interesting. It's not interesting at all. We don't like it. But there is so much you can mind when you take something very real and put it in this hyper world. You just said the opposite. 
in the same freaking paragraph. You just said the opposite. These people are bipolar. Duplicitous BSers. These people are masters at double talk. She just told you one thing in the same breath, turned around and said the complete opposite. Robinson's comments about women and people of color being front and center for the future of the genre echoes what Marvel Studios producer Victoria Alonso recently said. The Marvel producer appeared at the NSC International Animation Film Festival to promote Marvel's What If. Yeah, we know how that worked out. What If was one of the most cringiest TV shows yet. During a woman in animation panel, Alonzo said that diversity, inclusion, and gender parity all go hand in hand with showing the world as it is. No. This is your world as it is. I'm sure where you are, you're surrounded by infinite diversity, except thought. But that's not how the real world is. The rest of the world don't live inside your bubble or echo chamber. There's about 6,000 characters in the Marvel library that we have access to, and that's a real flipping shame. So if this goes right, which it ain't, we will be telling these stories for many, 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 sorry, I got caught in the loop, many generations to come. Man, I hope not. Because they're not telling the stories that these characters are famous for. They take the stories that were great and put them through the forge and shape them into something closer to their heart's desire. Not what the customer wants or the fan wants. Alonzo would also claim she's asked, aren't you tired of e tired every time your movie comes? It's number one in the world. What a stupid question. That's going to end anyway. That, that, that was just a dumb question. But that's going to end. It's already ending. Shang-Chi barely made any money at all. The Eternals is such a woke, cringy, freaking movie. Yes, I know. They're touting $71 million in the opening weekend. But that number isn't what they were expecting at first. They had to lower their projections to meet what was actually going to happen. Next week is going to be even worse. It has to make two and a half times its production cost in order to break even. They got a long way to go. Next week's cut is going to be, I believe is going to be dramatic. It may make its money back. It may make some profit, but it won't be a lot of profit. Like Shang-Chi, they, they, they hardly made any profit. And this will be the same. They're, they're done making billions of dollars for these movies. You're never going to hit Avengers level amounts anymore because of what they're doing. They cannot create a decent movie anymore. She went on to describe the question as odd before elaborating. The reason we have that success consistently is because our audience is global. You cannot have a global audience and not somehow start to represent it. Actually, you can have a global audience without representation of everybody right it these people across the country across the ocean they love these movies despite not having their country represented in it they know the characters they know the stories they've most a lot of these people have read the comic books 
they see themselves see that's, that's the problem with you guys you you want to see skin color and genital usage as the only your identity that, that that's the identity everybody you think everybody wants to use to identify themselves that's not the case it's ideals it's principles it's heroism people of the world want to see their ideas fleshed out into an embodiment of what they believe they they want they love captain america because he is a good man can't see me but i'm pointing at my heart it's not about his skin color it's not about what's between his legs it's about the good he does they want to be that good person they want to see somebody and endowed with all those qualities that they are attracted to but you can't see that it's not about that for you it's just another white savior for you you can't stand it for some odd reason black panther is a great character i don't see my whiteness in black panther i don't have to i see a man who is willing to do whatever it takes to protect his people protect the innocent protect people in trouble I see a man with high ideals. I see a man with good principles and good morals. And then I see, I want to see myself in him. It doesn't matter that he's black. It doesn't matter that he comes from another country. It doesn't matter. You want to create a character from another country that's a different skin color that represents all these things. Fine, create one. Make him the best one you can possibly make him. If you can do a good job with it, I'm sure we'll all love it. But you can't. And you don't want to. You want to take our characters that we love, that we grew up with, that the world, they're iconic. The world sees these characters and they've loved them for who they are, not for what they look like. But you can't get past that. You have to let that go go it's about who you are on the inside not on the outside it's about what you do not about what you look like or have sex with it's about content of character alonzo continued for the longest time we heard a woman-led film will never open i say please check captain marvel made a lot of money then they always told us that Black Panther was never going to open and that nobody wanted to completely wanted a completely black cast and that made 1.3 billion. They actually think that they're the pioneers of stuff that happened decades before a superhero movie was even feasible to make. And who are these people that tell you this? Names or it's just BS spin. They never put a name on the oppressors of diversity and inclusion in their industry. It's, it's just an invisible boogeyman that they triumphed over to bring you the best woke film in history. So you can look at it from the social point of view, the cultural point of view. But truthfully, this is a business. From a fiscal point of view, you're leaving money on the table by not representing so they really do think that they're going to make money throwing all of this garbage into their movies. Emphasizing politics over content, over quality. They really are a cultist commune huffing on their own jankum. They made a crap ton of money in phase one through three of the MCU with barely any pandering and going overboard with representation. We all know why Captain Marvel made as much as it did. Box office trickery. You sandwich it in between two Avengers movies and tell everybody that it's a must watch in order to get needed information that relates to Endgame. And yeah, you trick people into coming to the theater. Not me. I didn't go to the theater to watch it. You didn't get one red cent from me. 
She then provided some numbers about Marvel's audience. I think 51% of our audience is female. 28% of our audience is Hispanic. If we don't represent the people that watch what we make, eventually they'll go somewhere else because somebody else will figure it out. Why, why would they go somewhere else? I, d I don't... I don't see myself in a Marvel character, so I'm not going to watch your Marvel characters anymore. Why would they go somewhere else? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If a person don't see their skin color in a movie, the movie has lost all merit for them. It's not worth watching, not worth giving their money to. So, Black Panther, take that for instance. There were like three white people in the entire movie. Two of them were bad guys. And one of them was berated as a colonizer. And a butthole. I still gave him my money. I still like Black Panther. I still like the character. Yes, Black Panther was a good movie, but it was not a great movie. There are several cringy, woke moments in that movie. And the story was not that well thought out. But it wasn't the worst Marvel movie. And I still watched it. And I own it. You still got my money. And if one isn't good, you hope for the next one. Because it isn't about your skin color. It isn't about your junk and what you do with it. It's about the character. It's about quality storytelling. It's about seeing your aspirations, your, your hope. Being good and righteous. Being a light to others is what people want to see in these heroes. Everything else is secondary. Everything else is external. It's aesthetic. Content of character is everything. The way you look is nothing. While not specifically talking about women or people of color, Kevin Feige promised Marvel Studios would be introducing more homosexual characters. Of course, because, you know, the world is 80% homosexual. So, we must represent 80% homosexual. He told Variety, it's always Variety, there have been gay heroes before in the comics. It is more than past time in the movies. It's just the start. So look forward to more of this, boys and girls. Ladies and gents, it's just the start. You can expect Thor Love and Thunder to be cringy as crap. You can expect every movie after that to be the same. If it's not, it'll be a nice surprise. But I don't hold out a lot of hope. If you liked the vid, give it a like. Give it a share. Give it a subscription. Heck, give it a Christmas present.